Here's a peek at what guests had to say after the show. Okay, the questions from the internet. How do you feel about Pope Francis now that he called pot evil? Not good. <laughs> That's, you know, I must say, I like Frank in some ways, but it's mostly the same old bullshit. It is. He's just John McCain in the dress. He really is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's Lindsey Graham. No, I'm joking. Uh, Glenn, are the restrictions in the bill passed by the House this week strong enough to curb the worst abuses in the NSA's intelligence gathering activities? Well, first of all, enlighten us. What restrictions were in the bill this week passed by the House? There's actually, it was a, a surprise bill. It was, it was something that was going to defund them using backdoors to spy on Americans. What does that mean, backdoors? I, it's, it's, I mean, one of the, the revelations actually in the book that we reported on for the first time was that when people order routers and servers from companies like Cisco, right. the NSA will actually physically intercept them in the mail, it, open them, put a back door on it, reseal it oh. with factory seal, and then send it on. So that's, this kind of bill would... Amazing. No, I mean, that's just really nefarious, and there's no oversight for it, so this bill would defund it. Um, and it's. I think the most significant part is this is the first time the U.S. government, after 9-11, is taking steps to limit its own power rather than expand its own mm -hmm. power. So the bills are pretty mild, but that's pretty symbolically significant. And there is no denying that these bills wouldn't even be reaching the floor without you and Ed Snowden. Yeah, there's no uh, debate about that. So... I mean, he might go to, I mean, if he came back to the country, and, uh, you know, to answer your question, I totally understand why he doesn't come back to this country, because he'd spend the rest of his life in jail. That's pretty much the reason. Uh -huh. Better places right. to live than Russia, though, right? I know. I mean, but he didn't choose, you know, he didn't choose to be there. He got I'm just asking, there. I'm just asking, like, you're in Brazil, you he's be, in Russia. Would you rather be in Moscow? I'd rather or, be in Brazil Would you rather you be are. in Moscow right. or a no. cage in the American but penal system to, for the rest of your life? But he might get to Brazil, I, right? I, is that the alternative? I mean, that's my choice? <laughs> those are, those are, that's his choice. Moscow or a cage for the rest of his life. I think he made a pretty rational choice. Absolutely. They made that plane land with, with the Bolivian president right. and they thought that he might well, be Yeah, exactly. Why, why is the leak E and not, the, I mean, the leak er and not the leak E uh, in so much trouble? I mean, he's willing to go to jail. Are you? Well, I mean, the, there were senior officials in the Obama administration, both publicly and privately, threatening to prosecute us and right. to, to criminalize our journalism for months, and we continued publishing. So, and then we, I came back to the U.S. even under the threat that that might happen. So, yeah, I mean, once you realize that what you're doing is the right thing, you can't let those kinds of bullying and intimidation tactics by the government occur. you. That's very brave. That is brave. That's true brave. Okay, Kristen, shouldn't the Republican Party be trying to craft an entirely new platform that will appeal to young people instead of trying to find one, find a way to effectively market the current one to them? I don't know what the current one is, but, uh, you know, I, I keep saying this, Rand Paul is the one guy who appeals to the younger people. Well, he's are... on your page with this stuff, yeah, yeah. and he's against intervention. And for legalization of... Uh, and he's for legalization <laughs> of pot. Yeah. And he's with Eric Holder on let's stop throwing all the black people in jail for smoking pot. So, yeah, I think he represents a very interesting new direction for the party. And I think that he's not the only one. Uh, that If you actually look at, at all of the potential uh, Republicans who might run for president, it's not exactly uh, the same type of field we had in 2012. Some of the guys are coming back and say they might run again. No, they're but, definitely younger. But you've got, you've got, a, you've got a lot of, uh, of folks who have this kind of younger energy who get that the world is changing. They get that the younger generation looks at politics in a totally different way. They don't trust the government, they don't trust the media, they don't trust political parties. Like you said, young people are not identifying with political parties at huge rates. So the Republican Party is the first one that, that is sort of feeling the electoral brunt of having failed to reach young people. Um, something that blows people's minds, somebody who gets to uh, the right to vote and casts a ballot for the very first time in the 2016 elections, based on average life expectancy, will be voting until the year 2076. Wow. So that's a lot of votes. So right. for politicians who say that young people don't matter, and we don't need to bother with them, making an investment in talking to them now before they decide that they hate you for the rest of their lives, for the next <laughs> six decades of their voting, is a really important priority. Well, it seems to me like the, the party, the, really, the future is between Rand Paul or Ted Cruz. They're, they are in the same generation, but they are appealing to completely different generations. Ted Cruz, his notion is always, what is the stupidest thing <laughs> that the stupidest Republican voter out there is thinking, and how can I channel exactly that? <laughs> he never misses a beat. I said this once, and 
this and an editorial we did on this show. He never misses it. He must have meetings with his staff and say, I think this is stupid, but help me out. Is it really stupid? <laughs> well, so, so uh, what, what's crazy uh, about Ted Cruz actually... with Rick Perry lately, so... <laughs> I was talking know, but, to... But Rick Perry isn't that generation. And nobody takes Rick Perry seriously, and he is not going to get the nomination. No, but but he just, has those new glasses. He has the hipster his, glasses now. But it's not a very it's it's not a very deep bench. I mean, there don't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be anybody who's really going to emerge who right now can contend with Hillary. I mean, you know, I don't care what you what you but say it, about those others. I don't I don't think it's even close right now. Like maybe someone will emerge. Oh, I yeah. think yeah. Hillary. I think she's extremely formidable. But I think she the, the real question is if could not totally Hillary, lose. who she could, on the she could lose. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Lose. She could totally lose. But because but it doesn't seem like there's a challenger right now. She could lose I mean, the same I mean, way. Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Rand Paul. Al Gore was going to win. Rand too. Paul is not going to compete with her on a national stage. I totally I, I mean, disagree. No, and I, just, I, I think I, we're talking about shallow benches. Right. The other thing is, if so. not Hillary, if she just if she decides this on this whole book tour, I'm not dealing with this mess. I got the squirrel chasing me. I am so over this. I'm not running for president. Um, but that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. That's, that's probably that's true. But if but, she but doesn't, remember Al, then... Al Gore in 2000 was going to be president. I mean, he was following the peace and yeah. prosperity. The 90s were fantastic. Everything was great. He was like, all right, as long as I just distance myself from the blowjob. <laughs> We're all good. And he played it super safe. He didn't mention his own signature issue was the environment. And he said, how could I lose to Bush? I mean, this, <laughs> this moron. I'm not, and he did. And Hillary could lose the same. Well, Hillary was she supposed to win in 2008, too, right? Yeah. So that was the guaranteed certainty that, that she thought she had, and, and she didn't. So, But then she didn't even win the nomination. Right, exactly. Because a phenomenon came along named Barack Obama. But this time, she's going to win the nomination. But I, I absolutely think she could lose by, she, by playing it just too safe. She could, but, but, who, but who do you think will beat her? I mean, that's well, the hard bet, right? Like, yes, she could lose, but it doesn't seem to me like there's, see, that's the thing, like there's a legitimate challenger right now. And she's evolving. She's evolving on the war. She's evolved on equality. She's evolved on a lot of issues. And it seems like all the candidates have to. It's going to be Ted Cruz versus Rand Paul. And the problem for the Republicans is the people who come out in the primaries, the people who come out to the debates, are the knuckle draggers who love Ted Cruz. So, well, so and as soon as and as soon as Rand Paul says something sane, he'll get booed at the so debate. So actually, like the Republican electorate is kind of split into thirds in these primaries. Like, I take a state like South Carolina. You've got. Uh, you've got uh, about a third that say they're moderate or liberal, but then you've got a third that say they're somewhat conservative and a third that say they're very conservative. And you can't just win the very conservative, even in a GOP primary in a state like South Carolina, and win the nomination. Um, you've got to be able to get a broader coalition. That's I mean, we nominated John McCain. We nominated Mitt Romney. And uh, uh, this next time around, I mean, you've got the Chris Christie's of the world. Yeah, you've but, got the Marco Rubio's of the world that are trying to position themselves as building. But they're this eating their own. Coalition. I mean, they're they're eating their own constantly. It's what happened Chris last Christie? time. It's what's going to start. <laughs> <laughs> it's even eating. Here's your alley oop, Bill. I gave it right to you. I gave it right to I you. I thought man. I heard Put every right Chris Christie joke in the world, and now he's, <laughs> he's eating his own. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, panel. And we will see you next time. Real time with Bill Maher. Ask Bill and his guests your questions right after the show at HBO.com or on Twitter.